Champions League draw came out. And now we're going to do the FC Wonder Kid Champions League predictions from Group uh, A well, to Group H. And I'm expecting you gotta, some bold takes, mate. I'm expecting some yeah, bold takes. Yeah, there, there will be some. But if you've got a drink handy or something, let's pour one out. To obviously, this is the last time we will be doing group predictions uh, oh. because it will be a whole new Champions League next season. Mm -hmm. um, and my goodness, are there some juicy groups in this one, and it's going to make me miss it all, uh, all the while here. But you know what we can move on to mm -hmm. in the future? We will have this type of Champions League format that will go into the wind and never be seen again in its format. Uh, we'll have it at the Club World Cup starting in 2025. So we can talk right. about that when it comes down the pike. But my goodness, these are mouth-watering. I guess, do you want to start at Group A or do you want to just confuse yes. people and go all over the no, place? No, no, okay. no. Let's go Group A, okay? But while we're doing yeah. it, don't forget to comment your predictions for each group. I'd like love to see it. And like this video for more videos just like this okay pp we want to yeah. see your support in the comment section and in the like button so group mm. a an interesting yeah. one with bayern munich man united copenhagen and galatasaray what do you think mm -hmm. who's gonna pass Bretton, in group a okay who's gonna pass okay here we go uh i don't know if i can do this i'm not gonna do it i got bayern Sure, they left it late against Bla uh, Gladbach over the weekend. You got Matisse Tell chipping in an 87th minute goal. Mm -hmm. Great to see that because they're going to need it. But this particular group I don't mm -hmm. think is going to buy, uh, bother Bayern Munich. You've got Bayern Munich at the top for me. Mm -hmm. I've got – I was thinking about it, but I think Manchester United will get their act together. I think they will finish second here. I think Galatasaray will be a whole lot closer. And I was the one that said that they likely could be in for a big, big, big mm -hmm. uh, Champions League this particular season. I'm just not I, – I, I just can't do it yet. Uh, but Galatasaray in third, mm -hmm. um, even though I think an Icardi and a Zaha could definitely surprise a United in second, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've got my favorite team actually out of the bunch in fourth. That's Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. Simply because they've got three 18-year-olds you got to watch out for. Four, actually. One is playing less than the others. But you've got Rooney Bargy, who's actually – has 17 going on 18. You've got Ori, Oscar Sin, the striker, and you've got the Hoyland twins. Yes, the brothers, twin brothers of Rasmus Winter Holland are currently in the process of breaking through for Copenhagen. So if you're looking for FC Wonder Kid in Group A, that's where you'll find it. Um, but they'll be fighting for third place, likely to find their way to Europa League. So Bayern, Man United, Galatasaray, Copenhagen. That's my group A. So they find themselves in fourth place. Then I completely agree yeah. with you, Bretson. Then Copenhagen will be the fourth place. And Bayern Munich first. And Man United second in this group. But go. let us know mm. if what if you agree with us in this one. So group B. A, little, a bit more interesting, yeah. I think, with the second and third. Because a lot more can happen. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know. Europa League. <laughs> Let's wait, wait, wait. So group B has yeah. Arsenal, Sevilla, PSV, and Lens. So, who'd you yeah. got? Who'd you got passing in this group? I think this is my first uh, surprise. I have Arsenal winning it. I think full strength, whether it's full strength or it's mm -hmm. depending on how long they're without party. I think the Urian Timber uh, injury just really sucks for them because he looked like he already fit in. But I don't think it's going to bother the Gunners. I think they'll be at the top of Group B. Um, but here's my surprise. My number two here is a team I think is very on the rise, even after losing Xavi Simons. Um, I believe PSV Eindhoven. I mean, Luke de Jong is, is, has already had, he's got seven goals already this Johan season. Uh, they've, they've got Johan Bakayoko breaking through. I thought he'd move before the end of the window, but he said, no way. I'm not leaving. I mm -hmm. think we can win the thing, and I think we can do really well in the Champions League, and I want to see it through. And I, I don't know why he doesn't get more love. I love Joey Veerman. I am, I think I'm, I think I'm borderline obsessed with Joey Veerman. I'm actually surprised that Veerman did not move. So I'm picking PSV Eindhoven over Sevilla because Sevilla is doing what they did last year. They've started the La Liga season with three losses in a row, which I know probably virtually guarantees that they like get to the Champions League final or something because they're so weird like that. Um, but they lost to Valencia, Alaves, and they lost to oh, uh, Hirona. So when it comes down to it, um, I, I don't know. I think PSV is going to take the step forward, and then Lens will be fourth place because they have not properly uh, replaced Openda and Seco Fofana, mm. in my opinion. Okay, I agree with you. Arsenal finally okay. back in the Champions League, and we both agree that Arsenal will be topping this group. 
I would love okay. to go with PSV for Johan Bakayoko, but Sevilla are the specialists in, well, they Champions are. League, no, Euro Europa League, so they might end third, but I'm going to go with them second in this one. But you went bold, okay. mate. You went bold because, yes, PSV could surprise a lot of people, and I have long like at him. fourth. So Group C. Yeah. Group C is an interesting mm -hmm. one with a Portuguese team that, yes, they did it. Braga beat Panathinaikos in the playoffs. And Group C has Napoli, Real Madrid, Braga, and Union Berlin. It's absolutely mad to think that Real Madrid are going to be the player in the stadium of Braga, okay? It's going to be mad yeah. and a great experience yeah. for all the Braga team. And it's good for yeah. Portuguese football, too. I believe in Group True. C, Real Madrid will be topping. Uh, with a Jude Bellingham masterclass consistently, as it seems to happen. Napoli second, uh, with Ozime yep. highly involved. And I think Braga will get third, uh, even though Union Ooh. Berlin is a great team. I think Braga will be getting Europa League. I'm showing my bias here, okay. but Bora La Bruma, Ricardo Duarte, a lot of talent at Braga. Even Motini just landed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, Leipzig carved Union Berlin open, uh, but they were a man down. But I, I, but Xavi Simmons scored th before. I watched that one. Xavi Simmons. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That you're right. You're right. And Xavi Simmons already a great mm -hmm. signing. We'll talk about those later. Yes. But I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, okay. I'm mildly concerned. Mm. Uh, I, I don't think anyone in Group C is going to threaten Real Madrid, even though Real Madrid has Eder Militao out, mm -hmm. even though they have Thibaut Courtois out. They got Vinicius Jr. out for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm not worried. And, and to be honest, I think there's a there's a person here that maybe not in the groups, but in the knockout stages could turn themselves into hero status. And that would be uh, the likes of Kepa. Uh, if he winds Ooh. up being the guy um, that okay, he's not going to do Courtois things, but my goodness, if he if he got back to what made him the most expensive goalkeeper in the world, form wise, uh, wouldn't that be nice for Real Madrid? But they're I don't think Napoli is going to come close. Um, so I have them a distant second Napoli. And I'm a little worried about maybe maybe defenses are starting to figure out Kafar at Uh But doesn't really matter when you got Victor Osimhen, who at times is unmarkable. So I got Napoli in second, and then I'm going to flip it here. Uh, I know just because I love the story behind Union Berlin, I'm going to say Union Berlin goes third because of their stout defense. Um, and just a reminder that Union Berlin got back to the Bundesliga only four years ago, and they're now in the Champions League. They've been the breakout team in the Bundesliga for like two consecutive seasons, maybe even three consecutive seasons, and they've been punching well above their analytics. Um, so whether or not that luck runs out, doesn't matter. They're in the champions league. And I think uh, just being in the champions league is huge for them, but I've got them pipping Braga for third. I completely agree. Union Berlin is a team that surprised me a lot these past seasons. Yeah. And just touch, just touching what, what you said, Kvarat Skelly has only scored two goals since March in, uh, in yeah. Serie A. It's not looking too good. And I remember people clearly saying with confidence that Kvarat Skelly was better than Rafael Leon. And mm. it doesn't seem to be the case. Even Chiesa is starting the Serie A season better than Kvarec right Ryder. now. So let's see yeah. what's going to happen. And Ozime, watching that game with Lazio, it was worrying. Mm -hmm. Sarri had him figured out. Okay, He didn't score any goals. I think he didn't even have a shot on target too. So let's mm. wait and see. But I believe two, one in second, Napoli. For, uh, one Real, second, okay. Napoli. Okay, Group okay. D with <laughs> another Portuguese team. Group D with Benfica, Inter, Red Bull Salzburg, and Real Sociedad. This is a difficult group to predict, yes. but I'm going to say this, Bretton. I believe that Benfica are going to end up first with uh, in with Inter in the uh, that were Champions League finalists. Okay. But I still believe wow. that Benfica will have revenge on their minds and they'll be playing better football in October and November. Okay, I, I believe enough. in Benfica. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. uh, with Frederick Orsnes uh, yes. playing left back, right back, defensive mid, striker, goalkeeper. What, what position is he going to play? I, no, I know he was. He had a hell of a game over the weekend. I just I That's saw enough of that, and great to see him. Uh, well, I'm glad you were able to do that because I actually had that for a little while. Um, and I, I just I kind of like how Inter has started the season. I'm I'm more impressed that they have held on to their core, mm. uh, Bastoni and Barella and Lautaro. Um, and Taram has been decent so far, so they've started pretty hot. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I like the, you know, they've replaced the experience with more experience in the form of Alexis Sanchez, Arnautovic, um, Quadrado. Uh, so I do have Inter Milan finishing top here, but I do think it's going to be insanely close, and I think 
I agree with you. I think Benfica could definitely pull off what they did last season. Um, mm -hmm. They were in the group of death last season, and right, they finished top of it. Benfica had um, Juve and PSG yeah. and Maccabi Haifa, and they managed to score six okay. goals to top the group. PSG thought Look they would that. end up first, but they worked themselves to go oh into that my. first place. Which PSG well, then got knocked out. <laughs> uh, yeah, and this is like this is like a baby gr group of death for me. It's not the group of death, but Group D is like a baby group of death because mm -hmm. RB Salzburg is always a wild card, Fuck. and it's that next man up mentality. They sell off. Hell, we just saw Sesko score his first two. I think it's his first two Bundesliga goals for uh, Leipzig yes. uh, after taking the step up from Salzburg. But listen, now they've got uh, you know Simic. Roko Simic scoring his scoring, scoring his first brace this season you've got Karim Konate who I think will be their next massive massive lottery Roko ticket will be. out Roko um, will he, be. he will be I believe in Roko yeah. big time too Breton I think both will be big 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 for the well, Champions League at Salzburg because and, they play with double and, striker and that, right and and that's the thing is that I believe that they always keep these teams guessing now with mm -hmm. with that said with that said, um, they made history. I think Aronson was on the team when they did make history. Uh, but they made the, the only the knockout stage once, you know. But they always make it relatively interesting. So Salzburg, while I don't think they're going to threaten Benfica in my mm -hmm. predictions for second or Inter for first, I do think that they will pip out Real Sociedad for third and the Europa League. Um, but like guys like Kanate and and yep. Simic are going to make me watch but there are other guys umar soleil has started really hot this Oscar season uh, sam samson baidu if you don't know the name you will after this champions league campaign and you have to think about this for for salzburg this is almost like their uh how much is that doggy in the window right it's it's them putting their their best talents on display and it's their next step up uh because ultimately two or three of these guys from this squad Baidu in particular in my opinion um Gorna Duath Lucas Gorna Duath their defensive mid uh Amar Dedic and either one of the strikers between Konate and Ses uh Konate Susie. and Simic could could be on their way out so it and that doesn't even take in care guard mm -hmm. um into uh into what you call into Completely consideration agree. so FC Wonder Kid of Group D is Salzburg, but watch out! Watch out for Sociedad. Uh, uh, Takafusu Kubo is hot to start the I season, agree. and Arsene Zakarian um, is a new signing that I would definitely be watching out for. But I still have them in fourth. Completely agreed. Completely agree with a lot cool. you said. And Di Maria too could become the all-time assister in Champions League history in this campaign. He's got 38 assists, and if he be, if he gets four. He will be equal to Christian okay. Ronald with 42. So let's wait and see wow. if that is going to happen. So Group E has Feyenoord, mm. Atletico de Madrid, Lazio, and Celtic. Look, a lot of surprises can happen. I have in Group E, Atletico de Madrid topping it. But look, yeah. if Lazio gets second, if Celtic gets second, if Arne Slots Feyenoord gets second, I'm honestly mm -hmm. not surprised. So this is an <laughs> underrated group of death in my eyes. So watch out. Yeah for Celtic at home. I believe that's going to be a very tough ground, and I'm going to believe, it's bold, that Celtic... I'm not going to say... Ay, man, it's Feyenoord or Celtic, <laughs> man. It's Feyenoord. <laughs> but I'll go Atletico first, and I'll go Feyenoord second with Arnes Lott football with Santiago Jimenez at, at forward. I believe a lot uh -huh. in the style of play, and what Matias Wiefer and Gertroyde, Igor Paixão, they have a lot of players that have stayed. I'm going both They do. Feyenoord. They do. Okay, okay. And and Jimenez, I think, is already he's got five goals in his last three games against eh, okay, your divisi talent, but still you gotta put the balls the, the balls in the back of the net. Um you know what's crazy here is I I have Atletico Madrid at the top of group A, and the biggest reason I have uh is probably because of a lot of the transfer hangover or the transfer drama hangover, whether it's around Joao uh, Joao Felix. Oh. Um, moving on, which we'll talk about later, but a lot of that has been put in the rear view and already this season, um, you know, Depay, I think he's already got a couple goals. Uh, Alvaro Morata already has three goals this season, which is whatever. If they can actually get, if they can actually get uh, solid, solid returns from them, I think Atleti will be at the top here, but I am definitely going to go uh, big and I'm going to say it's going to be Feyenoord in second. Uh, Mats Viefer, they kept Hanko, they kept Gertruda, they kept uh, Jimenez. <laughs> mm -hmm. So even with losing Koksu, um, I think that they will uh, gel, mm -hmm. get, get better. Um, but the only thing I don't like about it is that <clears throat> the 
the additions to their squad uh, have not been as strong, but they have kept a large enough core that I think they can beat a Lazio that before their win over Napoli, um, I believe they lost two matches to Genoa and Le- Lecce. Mm-hmm. Lecce? Lecce? Yes. How do you yep. say it? The Lecce. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, so Sari is, you know, had a sorry start to the season and he might have just bought himself some more time <laughs> with that pretty uncharacter- uncharacteristic win mm-hmm. um, over uh osim and, and and napoli so uh i'm gonna say it here if lazio finishes third like i'm predicting them to i do have them as a pretty big favorite to win the europa league um uh, unless liverpool has something to I, say i don't have uh, about that in the europa no league, even though you have bright yeah. you have west ham you have home home is i I, yeah. I, I i still think it would be difficult but we'll, i agree that we'll Sarri see. is the variable that but, makes lazio tick and luis alberto there Immobile is not as big, but yes, the biggest player yeah. that left is Sergei Milinkovic Savic. So seeing yeah. a team of Lazio without him is going to be very interesting. So tell us and down below what you believe about Group E. Yes, Fredson. Yeah. Last thing about that is um, I'm just surprised, you know, Celtic Celtic brought in Paolo Bernardo, which I, I like, but I, I was starting to look at all their transfer history this particular uh, offseason, um, or I'm sorry, this summer, and my goodness, they brought in eight players under the age of 23. Mm-hmm. Eight players. Um, and the majority of them, I, I think the uh, quite a few of us uh, don't know a lot about. I mean, even Luis Palma, who I do know because he's CONCACAF, he's Honduran, he scored a bunch of goals in the Greek Super League, uh, but it, it feels like... It feels like Big Ange is actually still in charge of Celtic um, because, you know, bringing in these no names from kind of elsewhere. It's going to be really interesting to see how they all gel. But you know what? They won the old firm recently. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I think their atmosphere gives them that 12th man. Uh, And, uh, you know, I can't wait for Feyenoord Celtic because those are two ridiculously rabid fan bases. Uh, That's going to definitely win the day for atmosphere. When it yep, comes down to it. It's true. And Group F now. Group F with PSG, Dortmund, AC Milan, and Newcastle. And this is the group of, group death. of death. It's the difficult yep. group to predict the second place. But the first, it has to be PSG. PSG made mad transfers this season. And if they don't end up in first with Mbappe staying, I don't know what yeah. should happen at PSG. Okay, so PSG, I got them first. And I have Asa Milan second. I love what they did in the transfer window. Even though I think St. James's Park is going to be a very difficult away fixture for Milan, I still have Milan second because they did go bold in the Champions League in the past year. Mm-hmm. And it's so interesting. <laughs> it's so yeah. interesting that, remember, like, when everyone was saying Mbappe was going to Newcastle? Well, he is going to Newcastle after the takeover, <laughs> but as an opposition player, okay, playing for PSG. But it's mad to think that Newcastle, in the spa- space of, like, 20 months, they're in the Champions yeah. League, and they got top four in the Premier League. So congratulations <sighs> and learn from this experience with Bruno, with Tonali, they can surprise. Newcastle can get nine points at home. They can in the Champions League. So it will be an interesting game. Very interesting. <laughs> I I, I agree. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be all down to whether or not Alexander Izak can take another step up mm-hmm. and score goals in the in the Champions League, right? Against these types of opponents, AC Milan, uh Borussia Dortmund and PSG. Uh so I, I, I that's why I got Newcastle um oh goodness. I have them in third. Uh, and I've got Bo Russia Dortmund in fourth. Ooh. And believe it or not, I'm, this is going to be my crazy one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out there that I think AC, AC Milan is going to gel faster than PSG, uh, even though PSG has Kylian Mbappe. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to say AC Milan at the top, uh, PSG in second. Um, so I think that's a, that's a bold take, but one that if we've watched them early this season, they still have improvement to uh, – the Rossoneri still have improvement to make. Um, but I really think that they can make it. Only injuries are in their way. I mean, hell, Tamori doesn't look his best. A lot of people don't look their best in that roster. They're still winning takes. games. You got two um, yeah. takes, mate. You got AC Milan ahead of PSG, and you have Newcastle ahead of Dortmund. That's yeah, two well, takes. you know, I, I, listen, Dortmund, I I don't like this. They're getting away from the trans po- transfer policy, um, in my opinion, that they made that made them so dangerous and so exciting to watch all those years. Now, 70,000 plus are still going to show up at the Signal Aduna. That's not going to change that, right? So, yes, from an atmosphere perspective, again, this is like A plus for atmosphere um, all across the board. But 
Dortmund, for, for me, I, I think maybe this is more me like mm-hmm. trying to get back at them uh, in some respects and they're not listening. But like, come on, they, mm-hmm. they did nothing, in my opinion, to actually replace Jude Bellingham. Right. And they're still riding the same horses that they brought in several seasons ago, whether it's Kareem Adeyemi and Danielle Malin and Yusufa Makoku waiting. We are waiting for one of them to take the next step up. And it has not happened just yet. And their transfer window means that they have they definitely have um, faith that these guys are going to do it. So I, I will happily eat crow. What I love about this, though, is Christian Pulisic going back to to signal Aduna going back to Dortmund um, to where he made his his debut to to the team that essentially shaped him. Um, so I love those types of storylines um, that are all back across to the Milan. board. And Thonali back Absolutely. to Milan. That is a mad one yep. too after the Newcastle yep. voted for 17 million too. But let us love know it. until now your predictions of all the groups down below. Go bold people, okay, in this video. Group game. I think this is the yeah. easiest group to predict. Man City have the easiest group in terms of opposition, in my opinion. They literally what? Mm-hmm. They, they, Haaland scored five goals last Champions League mm-hmm. against Leipzig in the, in the knockout stages. So Man City yeah. first. I think Ma- Leipzig will be second. I have Red, uh, I've got Young Boys third and I've got Red Star <laughs> fourth. That, trust the Swiss though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only reason I would put Young Boys below Red Star fourth you know in the group is because they just sold their best player and fabian raider uh sold him to stad renee um so i'm a little bummed about that but i think they are good enough to get uh above a team mm-hmm. that has not won a group stage game in four years uh red star red star belgrade um we'll see and they haven't made it out of a group stage in 20 plus years or maybe even 30 plus years but listen you're right it's the easiest one manchester city should actually be able to rotate through this um and rb leipzig points. is saying yeah, and RB Leipzig is like, what do we do to deserve this? I mean, do are we going to see another <laughs> seven nil loss? Are we going to see another six three loss on the horizon? Um, and uh, maybe they'll try something different this time around. But that was with Nkunku, that was with Gavardio, that was with Sobislai. So what's it going to be like without them? Um, <laughs> so Early we'll Holland has the chance with Leipzig, Red Star, and Young Boys to absolutely break. The record of one of, of Champions League scored in one campaign of Christian Ronald. Sure. So let's see if mm. he goes bold in those six matches. It can happen. And let's not forget yeah. that Man City were unbeaten in the last Champions League campaign. With this group, that's a pretty positive start for then the knockout stages that they will be but, favorites, but, favorites to win it but, again. But sir, so was Bayern. So was Bayern. <laughs> um right they were on they were six and zero right it's six true it's all. true i get you um, i get you it's true it's true it all, so was Bayern, and it hurt him hurt but, him in the end but it i still him. think this uh, this transfer window which we're going to talk more ahead was elite by man city so here the last yes. group the group that look i think it's easy to predict too because the one and two is group h with barcelona Porto, Shakhtar Donetsk, and Royal Antwerp. Royal Antwerp, yeah. please pay special attention to Arthur Vermeer in this center mid that is absolutely brilliant and the future yeah. of his country, Belgium. Okay, so mm-hmm. pay attention to this lad of Royal Antwerp. So, yeah. Bretton, who do you have here? <laughs> well, uh... I do have – I've got Barcelona at top. Ah. Um, we'll talk about them a, a little bit later, but I do think it should be relatively comfortable here, yes. although obviously Porto Porto has kept Taremi um, for now, uh, and uh, they've got kind of a new midfield. I mean, Otavio left for the Saudi Pro League, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see Nico Gonzalez go back against the club that essentially made him. Um, 21-year-old La Masia product will get his shot at uh, you know going back to Camp Nou and, and seeing if he can disrupt some things or, mm-hmm. you know, it's going to be really interesting. But very simply put, I think like you, I've got Barcelona at the top. I've got Porto in second. I've got Royal Antwerp 66 years in the waiting to get back to a European competition. Um, and I will not rule them out because as a team, they're very, very solid. They've got guys like Jela Bataille. Uh, they also have Sumaila uh, Koulibaly. 
Um, mm -hmm. And let me, yeah, I got that name right. Koulibaly, who they plucked from the Dortmund Youth Academy. Dortmund wasn't going to use him, so they brought him over, and he's sure. been starting like crazy for him, and actually uh, to relatively rave reviews. So as you said with Vermeeren, they have the most, some of the most intriguing players to watch for next season's big buys or the season after that's big buys. And then Shakhtar, who obviously you want to see do well based on what types of hurdles they are jumping over with the war still okay, going on yeah, there. And yeah, they've been yeah, mostly yeah. a selling team. Mm -hmm. um, but I've got Royal you Antwerp in third. And yeah, yeah. That, was tough. that was tough losses in that one. I completely agree with yeah. you, Breton. So we both have Barcelona top in the group. We have Porto second. And we have Shakhtar third? Nope, Antwerp. Antwerp third. Belgium the Belgian <laughs> winners, <laughs> and they did pretty good to deserve that. Which that last day was unreal. Just to just to see yeah. the just to see the live score, I, I couldn't I couldn't keep up. But people, let <laughs> us know what are you thinking about the Champions League predictions? Who do you have topping the groups? And do you agree with all the predictions that we said? Let us know in the comment section, and don't forget to like this video.